bro. What are you doing? Uh, building a mail server. I just want to say a massive thank you guys for supporting the last video like crazy. I gained like 80 subscribers. We jumped from 29 to 108. We got like 3k views. I'll just chuck the analytics on the screen so you can see it. Best video by far. I really thought maybe a couple hundred views. So thank you guys so much and I hope you enjoyed this video also. Essentially, making a mail server is one of the hardest sysadmin projects you can come over. It's not just about making it, it's also about maintaining it. Inherently, I don't care because I'm a kid and I want the experience. This is basically going to be split up into a three-part trilogy. The first one going to be the theoretical how does everything work, the second part being a mail cal docker installation, and then the third going to be every single piece is individually installed and individually configured, so you kind of get three levels of difficulty. To have a working mail server, you basically need to fulfill two general prerequisites, and that's to have a valid domain name and a valid IP address. In short, the reason why you have domain name is the same reason websites have domain names. You don't want to remember when typing in an email address, Sylvester at IP address. It's much easier to remember Sylvester at isreallycool.com or Sylvester at thebestyoutubechannel.com. That is much simpler and Essentially, it's just going to resolve anyway to an IP address, which is what we're about to talk about next. So IPs have essentially a reputation, and the lower your reputation, the lower your deliverability of emails. So for example, you have like a big group of emails from like at Outlook or at Gmail, and they're very specific on the type of reputation you have. So for example, you might be on one blacklist, and blacklist is just a list of IPs that one group of holders refuses to accept mail from, right? And then that reduces your reputation. And because that reduces your reputation, people who have high reputation thresholds, which like I said, Outlook Gmail, will essentially just either send your emails to spam or drop your emails entirely. You essentially have two variants of IP addresses which are relevant, commercial IPs and residential IPs. So commercial IPs are typically static, they're clean, so not in any blacklists, and they have already a high existing reputation and that's of course important because your business wants to send emails and wants to host a website. Whereas a residential IP address is shared by multiple users, there's no guarantee that if you had one clean one, then the next one's gonna be clean, it's completely random. So you could get a dirty IP address, or you could get you know unlimited dirty IP addresses. You have no control over that. And that's purely because it's dynamically allocated to you. I intend on using a commercial IP address purely because if you calculate hourly usage, it costs like $5 a month to host a commercial IP address, especially if you're just gonna use it for forwarding and you know, say one hour, you get $30 an hour. It's just not worth wasting that amount of time trying to reconfigure or reset up. I also wanna just quickly mention that I don't want my neighbors to get me put on a blacklist because I don't want my domain to be on a blacklist. So I can just avoid IP neighbors. I can avoid doing DDNS, so dynamic DNS, because every single time it changes, I'll need to change the link between the new IP address and my domain. And I also don't need to waste time getting a reverse DNS record every time it changes. And also you can say like, get static address from my ISP. And I mean, I can, but you have to pay more. And then at that point, you might as well just buy a VPS, in my opinion. Now we get to talk about the fun part of how to actually send and receive emails. If you see my cursor is we start at the MUA, which is the user agent. This is what you use to create, send and receive emails. And we're just gonna say creating because to send an email and receive, you have to create one first. So you create an email and you send it to the MSA with SMTP on port 587. The MSA is basically just like an intermediary. It receives emails from users. It does some basic checks to make sure it's okay. And then once that's done, it passes it on to the MTA. The MTA actually does the heavy lifting because it's a transfer agent. However, when it receives something from the MSA, it first of all just puts into a queue and you have to wait for your email to get to the front of the queue. Of course, if there's actually just you on one mail server, it's always gonna be at the front of the queue or at least somewhat close to the front of the queue. If you know, you've already sent a few emails that hasn't sent them out yet. But yeah, so it puts into a queue. Once it's come to the front of the queue, it needs to do a DNS query to determine where is it actually going to send your email, like to which other MTA is it going to send. And that means it gets a mail exchange record back. And that mail exchange record basically gives it a list or just sometimes one occurrence of where it should be sending the email address. Now, in the case that there is multiple MX records, 
it goes in order of priority and then the highest priority is the lowest number and then the lowest priority is the highest number and you basically keep going until you receive a hit on the correct server MTA server yeah now we're looking at the receiving MTA server and this just accepts the email and once it's accepted the email it does checks to see if it's spam is the domain valid and then all the other basic checks it needs to do and if that's okay it passes it to the MDA the MDA literally just saves incoming emails into the mail into the mailbox so for example if your user slash hopsy is one of the users so hopsy is a user it saves it into that folder or if the MDA listed as spam then the MDA puts it into the spam folder then so it's okay stored in the mailbox but the receiving client, the MUA receiving client, can't yet see the email. And that's because you have an MRA, which is retrieval agent, and that periodically pulls the mailbox to see if it got a new email yet. And let's say that that's, you know, every minute. You can also force a retrieval if you do like send and receive, if you have been on Outlook and super impatient because your email hasn't come yet and you start spam spamming send and receive. That is the equivalent of forcing a pull from the retrieval agent. And once it finds an email, it pushes it to the end client, which is the guy receiving the email. And that's how you see it on your end client. One thing I should mention is you have SSL and TLS used in this process. It's basically just a cryptographic protocol and it ensures secure communication over the internet. And the stages you typically see it is you have the MUA to the MSA, and this is just to encrypt the email during submission to the submission agent then you can occasionally have it between the MSA and MTA, but if it's encrypted between MUA and MSA, you usually don't need to re-encrypt it for MSA to MTA. However, for MTA to MTA, you always have SSL slash TLS because you're encrypting, of course, server to server communication, and always, generically, everyone supports that. So you always have uh, secure between server to server. Then you also have MTA to MDMA, uh, <laughs> Uh, MDA, sorry, not the drug, um, and encrypts the final transfer basically before mailbox storage to ensure, again, nothing can be man and middle attacked at this stage. Then finally, you, I mean, you don't need between MDA and mailbox, uh, MDA and mailbox, because you obviously had it between MTA and MDA. It's the same as like the MSA to MTA. Uh, but you can and usually do have it between the MUA and the mailbox because this just encrypts retrieval from your mail server. So people can't be listening like here, for example, at this stage. Uh, but in short, yeah, that's just secure encryption to make sure your communication over the internet is private and not being uh, maliciously uh, changed or edited. And the final must have security item is DKIM domain keys identified mail. It's basically email authentication and it prevents spammers and malicious parties from impersonating a legitimate domain. You can read more here on Cloudflare, but it's pretty flare. It's pretty easy to set up and it doesn't take too much time, but it definitely secures your email address and your domain. If you employ all of what we previously discussed, you will have basically a working email, but there are additional, I'm gonna call them support tools that we're going to add in just to make it a little bit better. The first thing is we need some protect against spam. So I'm going to use Spam Assassin. There are alternatives to it, but this is open source. And from what I read on the internet, one of the most commonly used types, if I just zoom in. Um, but essentially it's just going to block unsolicited bulk emails. So the equivalent of those block lists we saw before, they're basically going to do the same. If it's coming from a spam IP address, it's going to block it. If it's known spam or looks like spam, it's also just going to block it. It's going to improve what comes into your inbox. And it's just basically going to make you see a lot less emails than you would without having some sort of spam protection. Next thing is we're just going to use Clam AV. Again, this is open source. It is an antivirus, but it's specific for emails. So you might read some Reddit pages and they're like, oh, it's like 60%. Yeah, it's 60% if you use it as an antivirus on like Windows. I think it's better on Linux. But this is like, if you purely use it for emails, it does its job perfectly. This is essentially the standard mail cow uses it. Um, the mail in a box, I'm pretty sure uses Clam AV. Most tutorials you read online use Clam AV. So just 
ClamV is a perfect antivirus for your emails. Just to summarize everything we looked at, we have what I'm going to call the final stack with a clean IP address, which we're going to get through VPS, a domain name, which we're going to buy on Porkbun. You have your MUA, which I think I'll just use Outlook. You have your MTA, which is Postfix. You have your MDA, which is Dovecot, SSL, TLS encryption, and we need to obviously get that certificate, DKIM for email authentication. Uh, we have the email antivirus, which is going to be done with Clam AV, and then Spam Blocker, which I believe is Spam Assassin. Uh, I'm pretty sure MailCal uses something different, so maybe we might change to what that is, but at the moment, Spam Assassin. Well, I hope the theoretical part wasn't too slow for everyone. Next video will be completely hands-on, so I kind of want to get the theoretical out of the way, understand what's going on, so when we do the hands-on, I don't have to explain as much, and we can just get into actually installing and configuring MailCal. Because we all know if I did both, the video would just take forever. Also, I'm sorry, it's a little bit slower. I have a lot of applications I'm going through, specifically like two, three hour, four hour exams and stuff. So that is taking up quite a lot of time and I need to dedicate priority to that. So I'll make sure that MailCal video does come out within a week. So my week, let's say within five day, five working days. Uh, so that's seven days from now minimum. And yeah, well, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you all in the next video and goodbye.